Look, I'm here to talk about a very important place. It's where you're going to spend the rest of your life. It's called the future. So let's ask a question. Why is your windshield larger than your rearview mirror? Helps to know what's up ahead. Been a lot of companies that have been missing that. Microsoft, they've been kind of missing in action, haven't they? Sony, Sony, an amazing brand, unbelievably integrated, missing in action. Where have they been? What's going on with Sony? I could go through a major list, a list upon list upon list. What's with all these companies? The answer is, failing to see the future, way too busy, putting out fires, crisis managing. And I think one of the things that, uh, that we're doing is we're looking at the news, and there's an amazing amount of uncertainty out there, it's not just in the EU, but all over the world. And in a world that is filled with uncertainty, with bad news, by the way, let's just make a comment about the news. Bad news sells, good news doesn't sell. And if there is no bad news, they give you the anniversary of bad news. But I want you to know that that creates a fog. And the fog is surrounding a mountain of amazing news for you. And I want you to know what that news is. So in a world of mass uncertainty, I've got to ask myself, what am I certain about? There's a science of cycles. There's over 300 known cycles business cycles, weather cycles, biological cycles that let you accurately predict the future. Can astronomers tell you exactly when the full moon will be in the year 2030 in March? Thank you, absolutely, no question about it. Do farmers know when they're gonna be planting seeds versus harvesting the crops? Of course they do. Now, strategy based on certainty has low risk. Strategy based on uncertainty has high risk. Wouldn't it be nice to know what e-commerce is about to be, based on certainty? Huh? Yeah, that's why I'm here. So with certainty, let's take a look at this. First certainty I'm about, relationships. Yeah, we're in a technical world, but we're in a human world. And relationships are based on trust. If you don't have trust, you don't have a good relationship. And how do you get trust? Well, you have to earn trust. And how do you earn trust? Values. Honesty, integrity, delivering on promises. A lot of companies are undermining trust. Online companies and real physical companies. Not because they're evil people, but because they aren't thinking about trust, they're assuming it. You're going to be implementing a lot of changes over the next several years, internally as you grow your businesses and externally. And to make trust and relationships work, before you implement any change, Ask yourself, where is trust between us and the people that will be affected by this change, whether it's a product or service or a new organizational uh, change? Where is trust now? And then if we implement this change, what will happen to trust? And if trust goes down, don't implement it in that way. Notice I didn't say don't implement it. I said don't implement it in that way. Change how you implement it so that trust stays where it is. And if anybody in this room can raise the bar on trust, let me know, I'd like to invest in your company because you'll be doing quite well. This is a human world we live in. Let's not forget that at an e-conference, e-innovations conference. All right, there are two types of trends. See, the reason we don't really pay a lot of attention to trends is because sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Actually, there's two types. I call them hard trends and soft trends. This is based on 30 years of research. Hard trends will happen, for sure, definitely. You don't like it, too bad. Soft trends might happen. Good to know the difference. So I'm gonna teach you how to know the difference. What happened to Polaroid and to Kodak? Did someone say, shh, don't tell them about digital technology? No, it was there for them to see. They treated it as a soft trend. Oops. It was a hard trend, uh-oh. Good to know the difference. So what's a hard trend? Tangible, physical things that you can see. Well, let me show you. First example I wanna give you, demographics. I love demographics. Now in the United States, there's 78 million baby boomers. By the way, they're not gonna start getting younger. It's a fact. We can predict a lot about them. By the way, are baby boomers only in the United States? Uh, no. They're in Italy, they're in Germany, 
They're in Russia. They're in, believe it or not, China. Huge aging property. That one child thing didn't work out all that great. They're in uh, New Zealand. They're in Australia. Now, they're not in every country. I was just in Istanbul. It's a very young nation. The average age is in the 20s. But in many, many countries, baby boomers, loads of them. And that means there's opportunity. Let me give you an example. We got entrepreneurs in this room. Um, a lot of people love to go boating, but as they get older, as they get into their 80s and 90s, it gets kind of hard to launch the boat. It gets kind of hard to even get in the boat, but they love to boat. Why don't you and I start a business based on demographics right now? Let's create the easy launch trailer for seniors. Would that product have a growing market every year? What do you think? Absolutely, guaranteed. You can even see it number-wise. Every year, every year. Why don't you and I start a business? How about an elevator that retrofits on the outside of a home or condominium and goes up one flight? Would that have a growing market every year, every single year? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be good. By the way, those are good ideas. You've seen them. All right, good. They've already done that. My point is, you could start a thousand companies right now with a built-in growing market. You could clearly define and track and see and target. What else could you do? And the answer is, it's quite amazing. You just need to take the time to think about it. Uh, we got product intelligence. How do you do that? Put chips in it. You can put chips in just about anything. Anybody know what uh, M to M, machine to machine is? Machine to machine communications. I was in China a few months ago. There is a city bigger than Silicon Valley. It's all based on machine to machine communications. It was just built over several years. We're going to have, uh, their Chinese say we're going to have a billion machines talking to each other within the next five years. By the way, that's the machine internet. Machines talk to each other. By the way, most of those will be wireless. Maybe e-commerce is actually selling to machines. Cool is right. Hey, you think I'm kidding up here? Thank you. I'm not kidding. You think you need human customers only? Forget it. You're going to be selling to machines. By the way, those of you that are really going to pay attention to what I just said, going to make a lot of money. Mobility. Whoa, big one. You know, we think uh, that it's uh, all about uh, apps and it's all about tablets and it's all about uh, smartphones, but it's even more than that. Ask yourself, how can I use mobility to transform every business process? And you're going to start getting a better answer. All right, mobility, huge, giant. All right, how about globalization? You can be global right now very easily because of the power of wireless and what can be taking place. I don't have to worry about just the EU market. Think global. So here's a prediction I'll be right about. Over five years, that's short, five years, we're going to transform how we sell, how we market, how we communicate, how we collaborate, how we educate, how we train. Huge opportunity here for everyone. By the way, the companies that are not transforming those things will be falling behind rapidly because the curve's like this. You see, we talk about social media. No, 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 wrong subject. What you ought to be talking about is the communication age. You see, we worked hard at becoming information age companies. Is there a difference between informing and communicating? Yes. Informing is one way, it's static, and doesn't always cause action. Communicating is two ways, it's dynamic and causes action. Right now, every single company, and I know I've surveyed thousands of CEOs around the world recently, and they will all admit, internally, we're really good at, at, at informing, but we're not very good at communicating. Um, and so, what I want us to do is direct our future. Let's see how good we are with hard and soft trends. Number one, more emphasis on retirement living in populations that are aging. Hard trend, right? Let's try another one. Increased demand for wireless broadband, hard or soft? Hard, thank you, pretty easy. How about this, retail sales increase next six months? Soft, no guarantee. No guarantee. Christmas could be a flop, never know. Right? They, people in Japan thought things would be good before the wave hit. You never know. Uh, increase enterprise mobile apps. That means apps for uh, logistics, supply chain, purchasing. Maintenance, hard, thank you. By the way, most don't have that and need it badly. You provide that, you're going to be doing great. I don't care what country you're from. All right, increase tablet video conferencing. 
Hard, of course. Visual communications. Again, part of the communication age. Increased mobile marketing. Of course, that's hard. How about this? China strong in 2013. Soft, no guarantees. Data coming increasingly from equipment. Hard trend, absolutely. Local technical expertise dwindling. Soft, don't like it, change it. Every week, I want you to take one hour of that week at least and ask yourself, what are the hard trends? What are the things I know? And act on them. We can shape the future together. There's more opportunity now than there's ever been. Don't pay so much attention to the news. Instead, why don't you make the news? Thank you for having me in. Thank you.